My name is David. I am a native of Phoenix. I am 58 years old. My father's family has lived in Arizona for generations as a mining family. My mother's family immigrated here from Mexico at some point and they grew up in poverty for a long time. My father was a heavy drinker and a heavy beater. He had trouble managing his anger and he would fly off so often and so severely that we were all walking on eggshells. The violence would kind of roll downhill. He would get into fights with my mom and it seems like she was always punishing us for something. I remember her having us kids kneel on the hard ceramic floor to pray to get the devil out of us for being so bad. I don't even remember what we did. I still have leg and knee problems to this day. Amazingly, I got very sensitive to her and my father's moods. I could tell what kind of night it was going to be when I heard my dad close the door to his truck before he walked up the driveway to the house. I remember when I was about 12 and some friends of mine and I were out playing in the green area near the house and this guy walks up and asked me if I wanted some grass. <laughs> it's funny, I was playing and rolling in the grass and I thought he was talking about that. That was my first exposure to marijuana. I remember feeling free of terror and pain. I didn't realize how much I just wanted to feel okay in my body. I pretty much floated and slept through school and no one seemed to notice. I didn't really date. I didn't even know that my self-esteem was pretty low. I worked for my dad's company in construction when I left school. I've been doing construction ever since. It's ironic that I have been on my hands and knees doing work with concrete and ceramic tiles. The woman I married never knew who I really was and it was that relationship coming apart that was the impetus for me trying to get treatment. I tried to go into some kind of inpatient detox, but as soon as I got in, I was trying to get out. I would sit in groups and the facilitator seemed more interested in talking to me or challenging me and treating me like he was saying, I have seen this all before. You're just an addict. I was exposed to a lot of coping skills, but to be honest, I don't remember very much. I think I was very scared and uncomfortable. The place was sterile and cold and seemed kind of like some kind of prison. I remember seeing a lot of signs with don't on them. The place was full of no. I remember signing a bunch of forms and something they called an individualized service plan. What was on there didn't make sense to me. There was something about 60% this or five times a week that. We didn't have much time to talk about anything, the case manager or care manager or whatever. When I got out, I had some prescriptions and a list of support groups, including a Spanish-speaking one on the west side of town. I understand Spanish okay, but I don't really speak it or read it. I didn't really know how it was going to pay for the medications, and I'm not sure what they did. It's too much trouble to go to the doctor. I was told that my weight is a problem when I was in the hospital. I guess now I'm on the road to recovery. I just don't know what the next step looks like. I kind of feel like a part of me is dying. I live alone, and my adult children don't come around. I try to help my adult daughter, who has special needs, make it in the world. I have become her guardian and get anxious and stressed being her payee in dealing with her DDD team. We had this meeting with her case manager, her mother, her group home director. It's overwhelming. I wonder if my healing is somehow linked to hers.